بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سید فاروق حسن از ہیئر ود اے برانڈ نیو ایپیسوڈ اف اسکائی از دی لیمٹ دیر واز اے ٹائم وین گرلز ان پاکستان یوزلی ڈیڈ ناٹ پرسیو اسٹڈیز بیانڈ بیچلرس اینڈ اٹ واز اے پریٹی ایکسپٹیبل نام بٹ ناؤ دا ٹرینڈ از چینجنگ ناؤ وی ہیو امیزنگلی برائٹ اینڈ بریلینٹ اسٹوڈنٹس who go all the way up to PhD. We have girls who do one master's, do it twice, thrice, do MPhil, and then go up and pursue their PhD doctorate degree. Right now, I'm sitting with a very, very bright individual. She happens to have represented Pakistan at UNESCO headquarters in Paris. as the only Pakistani social scientist on the panel from an audience hailing from 69 countries. That's a big, big honor. She's also the first and the youngest Pakistani from Asia to have designed a teacher development toolkit for implementing whole school approaches to sustainability. She's also been nominated for the prestigious 30 under 30 Global Award by North American Association for Environmental Education for Services in Environmental and Sustainability Education. I am with Aruj Khalik. Assalamu alaikum, Aruj. Wa alaikum assalam. Wow, what achievements, ma'am. Thank you. I'm, I'm amazed. I'm dazzled. Thank you. That's, that's awesome at such a young age. Aruj, um, Where did this journey all start from? Where were you born? Uh, you're from Faisalabad, right? Yes, If I'm, I'm not from Lailpur. You're from Lailpur. Okay. Yeah. That's another thing. So, you know, the first time I spoke to Aruj and I said, okay, and she told me she's from Lailpur. And I was like, oh, you're from Faisalabad. She said, no, I'm from Lailpur. So she insisted on that. So you have to know the reason behind that also. But anyways, can you just run us down your journey of success? So, um, first of all, thank you for having me over. Um, it's an honor speaking to the audience of Pakistan. Um, I hail from Lailpur, which is most commonly known as Faisalabad. And the rationale behind calling it Lailpur and not Faisalabad is the fact that I believe that the later is a more colonized term. Um, so my quest is primarily against um, power that we observe in different relationships. So um, I was born in Faisalabad slash Lailpur, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I was brought up there. And I come from a family. I come from uh, this family, which is known for having its mark in academia. Okay. My uh, great grandfather, he was the first principal of Pakistan Model High School in Faisalabad. So okay. he migrated from Jalandhar to Lailpur. So ac academics and education is Run something that runs in the family. Um, and uh, I had my schooling, uh, my earlier schooling is from Lailpur. Mm. Um, I only moved to Lahore when I started working. It was my fourth year working. Um, and I was leading an international baccalaureate school in Lailpur. Mm -hmm. And um, I was by that time done with two of my masters. And I decided that I wanted to pursue an MPhil mm. in educational leadership and management. And I wanted to specialize in the field. That's when I moved to Lahore. And that was about five years back. But uh, both your parents are also uh, you know, in this profession? Of no, no, no. My father is in. Um, In, he's in the business of uh, development these days. Nice. Um, in the past, he has engaged with security services. Okay, and, and your mother? Yeah. And my mom is a housewife. Um, my mom is primarily the reason for my pursuit. Um, she dropped out of medicine when, uh, for her children. Mm -hmm. um, so back in the day, probably that was considered a norm, or for her, maybe that was a sacrifice she made. So a lot of my struggle and a lot of uh, things that I've pursued in life, uh, a huge chunk of it goes to my parents because um, they have invested their time, energy. And, and they have made I, you I, what you are today. Yes, yes. Uh, no, like, it's not a one woman show in any way. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have come together to help me achieve whatever I've achieved. And yeah. uh, one of the first two people are in the, in undoubtedly my parents. Very nice. And so uh, are you the, uh, how many siblings do you have? We are four siblings, mashallah. I have an uh, elder brother. He is also in education. He so you're is number two. Yes, I'm the second child. Okay. <laughs> Most people don't care about. Um, then I have two other uh, younger siblings, um, okay. a, bro a baby brother and a baby sister. Okay. So we are fam we are 
four siblings all together. Okay. And like a family of six, mashallah. Very nice. And uh, so your elder brother is also in academia? Yes, he's also in education. He's, okay. um, he's leading one of very reputable IB, um, schools in Lahore. And okay. Um, he also has uh, expertise in education technology. So we do converge in terms of our fields, but uh, our areas of domains of work are slightly, slightly varying. But I do look up to him as a role model. Yeah, uh, that's what I was coming to. So growing up, um, was he a major influence on you during your um, early school he days? Was, he has always been my first friend. Um, mm. We uh, people back in Lailpur, they even call us uh, Nazia Hassan and Zohib <laughs> because okay. we, we gel well so much. We yeah. would go around together. We I like I'll keep on following his footprint. So. Yeah, in one way you can say that he is one of the role models I had, but I do draw a lot of inspiration from the resilience of my father. Mm -hmm. um, he is one of the most resilient individuals I've ever known um, and someone who is a true empath. Um, secondly, I've drawn a lot of inspiration from my mom, uh, the, the perseverance she has and the um, you know, unaccountable care she had for all of us as, as a family and also beyond family as well. So I've always seen her conducting herself with uh, immaculate grace. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, in, in personal spheres, these two individuals have undoubtedly left a huge part. Shape your they have shaped life, me. your vision. Absolutely. They've shaped me into becoming the individual I am. Great. Um, I, I, I'm known for being absolutely, or I would say, uh, quite ambitious. And I think that ambition is something that I've drawn from um, my mentors on the way. Uh, for instance, uh, th this professor that I work with during my MPhil, Dr. Naima Qureshi, I've drawn a lot of inspiration from her ambition. Um, so I have been lucky, lucky in a way that I had uh, individuals around me who had attributes that I could take influence from or get inspired from. Um, I have had, because I started working very early on, I was 18 and a half when mm -hmm. I started working. Mm -hmm. um, and it was an accidental job that I took up and I ended up loving it. Um, so, so you completed your studies along with your job? Alongside, yes, yes. And this doing your job was your own thingy or was it, were you like? Uh, it was partially circumstantial as well. Um, okay. my, uh, my uh, father was going through some financial troubles at okay. that time. Uh, so I wanted to support, at least self-support myself. Oh, yeah. uh, and also I was ambitious in, in terms of I wanted to you know, delve into uh, professional endeavors very early on in life. Mm -hmm. I, always w I, I always knew that you know, I want to have a career. I want to be financially and uh, mentally independent, I would say. Um, but so I started off working as an ad hoc teacher and I started teaching physics back mm. in Lailpur. Mm. Uh, and those days I was doing my undergrad mm. in physics, maths, and computer sciences. Um, so, and then when I delved, you can say when I dived into it, uh, and I you excelled in yeah, it. Yeah, I not just excelled. I would say that I started seeking a sense of purpose in terms of whatever I was doing. Mm. So, um, my one of the very first few bosses. Uh, at that time, I wasn't sure if I'm going to pursue with education as a career. Uh, she would say to me that, oh, would you have it in you? Um, so I have to give it to her. Um, okay. I don't know if she's watching. Her name was Sadia Khan. Okay. So she would tell me that, you know, you have it in you and you should um, take it on. So encouragement plays a <coughs> major role. In it does. So yeah. I, I mean, like encouragement also in my case, I do draw a lot of influence from discouragement as well. Uh -huh. um, so if I were to Someone quote, challenges you, you take it. Personally. Yes, uh, personally in a sense that I try to construct um, positive energy out of negative criticism as well. Mm. So um, I always say this in my interviews and whenever I'm having discussions with uh, youngsters around me that a huge share of it goes into and I'm thankful to the people who critiqued me uh, because uh, that helps you reflect uh, into the choices that you're making. Um, people and also sometimes it gives you for me for an individual like me who is intrinsically motivated it also helped me build some inertia for the things i wanted to do so uh, if you yeah. tell me that you know you can't do it i would at least go back home and think about it that do i really can like is it really something that i cannot do and i'll think about it that is it something that i would like to put an in effort into resolving you know, I, i'm picking a lot of um, inspirational points from your talk so, you know, like, it's not a smooth ride all the time for anyone who's successful. You have your share of troubles, problems, ups, downs in life. That's life. But you need to learn to be resilient and overcome them. Encouragement and discouragement both play a very, very important part 
in what you want to do in life. You know, you can get inspiration even from discouragement. If you, someone challenges you, instigates you and transforms your energies into positive, uh, you know, matter, that's amazing too. But uh, before we go to that, uh, Aruj, tell me, were you like uh, in the school days, were you a outstandingly brilliant student, like the top three, were you an average student or were uh, you the last ba backbencher kind of a student? No, I have been quite studious. Yes, so you were the top life. three? Yes. Teacher's but pet? I wouldn't say I was a teacher's pet. You weren't a teacher's oh, pet. Oh, no, no. I was rather... You were <laughs> a naughty kid also? Uh, I was, I, I not was, I am a naughty person. Really? Inherently, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, I have been a textbook case of a student who is excelling at st uh, studies. I, I, I remember being a golden girl at my school and then a head girl as well. I've, I've studied throughout on merit scholarship across my uh, study years. But um, that's not the only thing I have been doing. I had been, you know, I have, I'm generally a very curious and inquisitive person. Uh, so I always wanted to try out new things like theater, like uh, sports, like, oh. uh, like writing and uh, oration. So you name it and... Um, I've ha I have had my fair share of engaging with a lot of activities um, down the course. I think uh, for that too, I would give a lot of credit to my parents um, because my my father would tell me to have experiences um, and try out new things. Uh, every time I would come up with a demand that, you know, I want to participate in this competition and I want to go to uh, this contest. So my father would stand his ground uh, regardless of what it was. And that didn't uh, affect your studies at all? No, it did not. I think, uh, he might, I think he's a very smart man. He figured it out that his daughter is a bit of a resilient individual and she's a bit of a free bird, which I think I am. So he decided to give me the power to choose. Mm. So since that responsibility transitioned with me, that taught me to uh, make decisions and stand by my own decisions. Uh, so I think uh, credit goes to him for, for excellent parenting. So that approach helped me in um, making choices which are, which are mindful choices and not just uh, ambitious choices. Um, so that's how it has been through and through academia. I, I just like doing things to perfection. You can say I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And, and, and while you were in school, early school days, I'm saying, who, did you take any tuitions or like who, no. who tutored you? Nobody. Your mom, Nobody. your father, uh, In the your initial brother. years, till the primary, my mom and my dad they'd help us out with the mm. homeworks, but later on they just You're set up, they just set up a routine that you have to come back home and you have to uh, you know, give some time to your academics before you can go out and have fun and you can play, play video with games. Friends or I, I, I was obsessed with reading and painting, so I would participate in a lot of competitions with these local magazines like Talimo Tarbiyat and mm. back in the day we oh, had yeah. these. Yeah, yeah. So, um, for no me, social media, no? That's yeah, right. yeah, no <laughs> social media. I was, I was an avid reader, so mm. I think uh, for me that used to be a treat that once I'm done with my homework then mm. I can do that. So, uh, so there was a bit of a reward system at home. Okay. Uh, from very early on and that sort of developed this habit of studying on our own uh, because I also think that um, I always had this feeling that I, I like doing things with a certain sense of purpose so if I'm at school I don't remember that I never really had this trait this was always there so even if I'm at school I would like to pay attention to the class because I would hate going back home and redoing all that's being done in the class mm. so probably my obsession with uh, being present in the moment is something that has helped me immensely. saving on time yeah yeah okay okay yeah. and and which games or sports were you good at in school I wouldn't say I'm good at sports to be very honest okay yeah you, but you were because I'm, I have always been afraid of getting hurt physically oh, okay yeah so uh. I have been into badminton and Table I've, tennis. yes I've done some of that um, I was into you know, uh, running and jogging. Athletics. Th yeah, these are the sports that I enjoy doing. Well, m more recently, I, I'm into Zumba, if you consider that a sport. Uh -huh. um, and my dad is a very avid weight trainer, so he tried his best to push me into that as well. Oh, yeah. um, well, that did, that did work out, but I won't say I'm very passionate about it. I do it in order to maintain a system, Just you know, a balanced keep lifestyle. keep yourself uh, physically yeah. active. So I, I would say I'm adventurous, but I don't think so. I am... Um, expert at any one of the sports okay okay and um, were you like during your school days early school days in Faisalabad as you said 
uh, were you like a social person, uh, uh, extrovert, or were you like an introvert kind of a person? I think I'm uh, an extroverted introvert. Um, extroverted introvert. Yes. Uh, That's so the first. Um, I would keep on talking about, I don't have an issue, I don't have social anxiety in terms of interacting with new people. That's something that just comes kind of naturally to me. Um, but at the same time, I do believe in maintaining my own boundaries. So there's a very small circle of people that I would let in. But other than that, I'm a very social person. I believe, I have been always a strong proponent of standing for social causes. Mm -hmm. um, so I have friends with whom I've run reading clubs to uh, permeate the culture of literature and celebrating literature. I have uh, volunteered for plantation drives. So I have stood for ca causes like, um, if you allow me to say it, feminism. So I feel strongly about the societal turmoil. That's something that is very close to my heart. Uh, and I think that's also one of the reasons I opted out eventually for the career that I decided to go ahead with. Um, so I have always been engaged with activities. I enjoy doing that because I believe that your work should not be the only thing that should define you. Um, you need to have flavor of a lot of other things which are happening around there in the world because if you would just look at it from one lens, I fear that you'd miss out on all the life that's there. Yeah. So um, they, I, I'm really fond of uh, Fitzgerald's um, The Great Gatsby, and he says that um, in that that I'm simultaneously repelled and enchanted by the vast majority of life. So maybe that has been the case with me. It, uh, you always find something of interest, and you yeah. know that keeps you going. So um, you did your level, the matric. Mm, I did my matric. Matric. Yes. And did you score well? I was one of the top three position holders in Lalpur like, board at that oh, time. Wow. And had you? sorted out or figure out till then what you want to do ahead uh, in life? You want to be an educationist, a doctor, engineer, what? No, I wanted to be a pilot if I would go back in the day. Oh, I wanted to be commercial a pilot or a no, fighter a pilot? fighter pilot. Oh, I wow. always thought that that's what I want uh, to be. But we do have girls now who are fighter pilots. Yes, but as fate had it, that was not written out for me. Okay. And I have no shame in accepting that. Okay. that uh, did you give Let's the exam or something? I did uh, go through the very first stage, but those days there was this case of um, this lady pilot who was she, much she, yeah, yeah. So they halted it for some time. And during those days, I was in my FSE. And ah, so okay. I decided that since it's not going to be an option for me any longer, I decided that I'll pursue um, something around the lines of quantum computing. Um, I thought I'll take up the role of being a computer scientist. Computer uh, scientist. Yeah. But when I got into my uh, undergrad, I figured out that that's not something that I'm very passionate about. I enjoyed doing it, but um, the culture around Lalpur of the South software houses wasn't something that I would have enjoyed doing. Okay. So I wanted to be in something, uh, I wanted to pursue a career which has some margin of engaging with uh, social issues some margin of building on my own competencies and something that can keep me driven. Right. Uh, hence, when I started with education, I figured out that this is something that I can find my true calling. You were in the process of discovering yourself. Yes. So yes. right from childhood, you wanted to become a pilot. I wanted to be a pilot. Then you took pre-engineering, obviously. Yeah, in my, intermediate. My, my grandfather was Faisalabad's first fighter pilot wow. at, back in the day in the Royal um, uh, Army, uh, Royal Air Force. Yeah. So um, I have heard so many stories and incidents of him uh, engaging in the 1965's war. So And I had read so many uh, war stories myself. So probably that's something that seemed very exciting uh, at that yeah. point in time. Yeah. But I think as you move on in life, you, you carve your own path. And yeah. there are certain things. I'm a huge believer in destiny. Um, I believe that you should put in yeah. your best. God has a plan for everyone. There's always a plan. There's yep. always a plan. So I've kind of, ex by now, now this point in time, I've kind of embraced the impermanence of being. Uh, so that's something that I enjoy now. There that, you go. There all right, you, go. you do your best, and then let's see what cards uh, destiny plays us. So when you did your pre-engineering, and I'm sure you must have scored well in it also, you could have gotten admission in any engineering I university. never wanted to be an engineer. I was so sure of you it. You were sure. You yes. only did engineering for the Air Force yes, thing, right? Mm -hmm. And when, when that dropped out, and then you wanted to do computer science. Uh, yes. Computer sciences, physics, and math, that's yes. what I pursued as so my So what did you do after your intermediate? How did you select <coughs> what 
do you want to do your bachelor's? You don't didn't want to go into an engineering university. I went to uh, like my bachelor's is from Punjab University. Okay. Um, it's and in what did you take? What subjects? Uh, ma my majors were physics, maths, and computer sciences. Physics, maths, and computer. Yes. So, so still, you were pursuing computer sciences. Yes. As in. Yes, but I was also passionate about physics. Um, I, I I love um, astrophysics. I'm really smitten by the idea of modern physics. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one subject that I took alongside. And um, you were in, in the hostel in Punjab University. No, 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 no. We there was a this sub. They had a sub campus in Lalpur. In Lalpur. Yes. You so enrolled I, there. Yes, I enrolled there. Okay, okay. And uh, how was that experience like? Uh, transforming from a hardcore engineering. Uh, you know, uh, it was still um, hardcore sciences. To be very honest, okay, it was okay. actually uh, my th these were majors. So we were studying four different types of sciences yeah. within the same uh, domain of the, the three overarching subjects. Uh, so it was equally challenging. Okay. It is just that it gave me more margin of deciding if I want to pursue because I had inclination towards physics as well. Yeah. Uh, I was interested in uh, pursuing modern physics back in the day, but. Um, there was no inspiration and there wasn't any system of support at that point in time which could have helped me establish that choice. Well, I had a couple of professors who, um, who sort of you know, pushed me towards pursuing computer sciences, but I think this is a dilemma of Pakistan that still uh, they're not, there's not much competency which is being built for girls who want to pursue a career in STEM education or STEM in general as a field. Okay. Um, so maybe that's that's a missed opportunity. I never really dived into that. Uh, I'm not sure how would it have been if I had explored it. But I decided that I'm going to go ahead with computer sciences. But even then, when I volunteered for some of the uh, options available around town, um, it was the work culture which wasn't really conducive. It wasn't um, encouraging for you. Yes, it, w it wasn't. It encouraging is not the issue really. The issue is it wasn't sustainable. It was not uh, something that I could have enjoyed doing okay. something that I could have stayed motivated for. Okay. So I just decided that this is not something I want to go ahead with. That, that's what you decided after you did your degree? Yes. By in, by you I, did was, your I was in my degree program when it started dawning on me that uh, if I have to do it, if I have to go ahead with it, I may have to move to some other career stream and I may have to um, you know, move to some other country for that matter, and which, which, which wasn't an option at that time. Did you seek any counseling or did you... Consult? I did. I spoke to some experts around town, but most of them recommended me to either move to Lahore or to Karachi, mm -hmm. uh, but I was only 18 at that time mm -hmm. and that did not seem like, an, like a viable option. Okay. Uh, I wanted to be around my parents. I'm, a ve I'm quite a family-oriented sort of a person. Okay. So for me, uh, the comfort of home, that was that, that took priority at that point okay. in time. So after your bachelor's, you started working. You said you got a job. Yes. And I was in my bachelor's when I started working. In your bachelor's. That would have been a very, very different experience. Yeah? It was a, when yeah. When you start earning. Yeah, yeah. Well, it used to be very exciting because um, I, my first salary was, was what's say, ten thousand rupees, okay. uh, and it was an ad hoc basis role, which was a temporary role for a month. Um, so I replaced this teacher, and then um, they ended up loving me, and I ended up loving it. And you were teaching what subject? Physics. Physics. Yes. To O which? levels. O levels. Okay. So and the student, you just made an instant connection with the students? Yeah, yeah. They must have heard you're one of them. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. So that's something we struggled with a bit, but then um, I loved it. I, I, in all honesty, there's no other definition for it. I loved doing it. And uh, then I started uh, considering it more as a viable career option. And then I explored some courses along the line, and I got enrolled simultaneously in a master's in computer sciences. Um, and then I moved to Faisalabad. Mm -hmm. That's where I got enrolled in this postgraduate course for um, teaching and learning. Uh, when I did that course, that's when I figured out that this is something absolutely exciting. And mm -hmm. that's something that um, is enthralling at a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I decided that, okay, this is something I can invest my life in. And then I was lucky uh, to get early promotions. I was 23 when I led my first team. It was a branch in Faisalabad. I was okay. the senior mistress. Wow. Uh, so there was a team of about 36 people. 
But this was your professional side. What about your studies? You were doing your master's. I was studying also alongside. Yeah. Yes. What were you doing? I was doing a master's in computer sciences those days okay. in the evening program. Mm -hmm. um, so and in the morning I was working full time. Okay. And um, and then yeah. after that you did another master's also. Yes. So that's also a very interesting story. So by the time I was done with my master's in computer sciences, um, I was also studying a lot about education in general and education in the global horizons. Uh, and there's this uh, teaching pedagogy. Uh, there's this teaching system called International Baccalaureate. So there was a school in Faisalabad which had launched IB. It's called IB. Um, IB program. IB program. Yeah. So they offered me to join um, their institution. And when I joined them, uh, again, I was leading a very, very promising team. And at that time, I was Pakistan's youngest MYP coordinator I was, who was leading academics mm. in a certain, in a certain um, category. Um, that's when it dawned upon me that this is something I need to pursue because the kind of education that was being imparted like the whole philosophy of IB is something that's very close to my own philosophy as well uh, not only of life but also of education in general so um, and an interesting happening happened I always had a knack for literature I, I have been an avid reader and I write when I feel like it mm -hmm. so uh, one of my uh, external year teachers she resigned and she got married and she went off and the, it was an external year and we couldn't find uh, a suitable match for it. So I decided that I'll plunge in. And along with my <laughs> official duties, I'll also teach the external year. I always taught alongside, even if I was in you a leadership role. Yeah, okay. Yes, uh, I always have been teaching, right? So when I took that, it just occurred to me that, I mean, like, there was no question about my uh, credibility or competency. But for the social value of the face value of it, I decided that it would be fair that if I also pursue a master. So I looked around universities which offer masters to science students. There weren't many. It's just that Nast Islamabad campus used to offer masters to students of sciences. So I wrote to them, and um, they allowed me to enroll in it. Mm -hmm. and it was, I think, mid-year when I decided it. It was in uh, December of 2017 mm -hmm. when I decided it. And their session had started in August 27. So I wrote them one, in one email after another mail, and I kept on going unless one day I got a letter from them that you know they are going to allow it as an exceptional cases and um, I enrolled in the program so I taught graduating year I worked with the team and uh, I alongside studied so I would come to Lahore to appear for my exams uh, that's one master's I completely did on my own through the help of Google and Google Scholar and YouTube Thank um, you. And yes, I, I knew some experts in the field, so I would touch base with them whenever I would get stuck somewhere. So that was a master's in which? Uh, linguistics and literature. Linguistics English, and English linguistics and literature. And, and wow. I did it from uh, Naman. So computer sciences and then this is quite yes. a variety, yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. But I'm, I've, I've been very passionate. I don't believe that humans have to be, you have to have expertise for a certain subject. Yeah, only. you shouldn't limit yourself. You, can you be shouldn't diverse. refrain yourself. Yeah, so there's no one peg in which you have to fit, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it can go beyond that. But usually the, you know, human nature is such that, you know, you become, you start as a generalist and then you become a specialist yes. and then you excel in that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so so uh, once I was done with that, at that time I had it very clear in my heart that I want to now specialize, as you yourself said, yeah. that I wanted to specialize in education leadership. Okay. And uh, I was very passionate about development education very early on. Um, so while working with uh, that school in Faisalabad, uh, because I used to interview a lot of new teachers, uh, and during those interviews, I recognized that there's a huge market gap in terms of how people are being educated versus the job market that's out there. So what I started doing on the side, we established this small uh, startup called Aleph Educational Leadership. Um, uh, it's called Academic uh, Firm for Education Leaders. So where we started helping out um, such teachers and such school for developing competencies. So it started off as a, a side gig where okay. I started working with different teachers who wanted to be in education, yeah. who wanted to excel in education, yeah. and started running small modules, mini workshops, mm -hmm. uh, capacity building sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recognized that maybe that's something I would like to continue doing on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a day job. I also established something along the side, which I continued based on, uh, it was more of like a project basis thing. Mm. Um, so then uh, in 2019, I moved to Lahore for 
pursuing an MPhil in education, leadership and management. Well, after many considerations that which school I need to go to and if I should stay here or should go abroad, uh, and well, the fate had it for me that yeah. I ended up with. It's all, it's all planned. Yeah, heading a team, um, I'm heading the academics of PYP, MYP and DP program, which is a whole school. Mm -hmm. And I'm also visiting um, faculty member courses in global citizenship yeah. education. And you're also pursuing your PhD. I am planning to. Um, okay. It's it's not a matter of if I want to do it. It's only a matter of when. Okay. Uh, so I'm looking for the right time, resource, and the right you know wavelength. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a project in my mind which I want to pursue research on. Um, so as soon as I have a funding for that, that's what I would like to do. So it's not just a PhD I want to do for the sake of it. Um, there's a goal that I have yeah, uh, for it. Specific purpose. Yes. For that. yes. Great. Aruj, uh, that was the um, educational journey of Aruj Khalid, but now we will come to her achievements, right? So before that we need to take a short break, uh, we will just take a short break, don't go anywhere, we will be right back. Welcome back to Sky is the Limit. This is Sayed Farooq Hassan and I am in conversation with Aruj Khalik. Aruj, uh, you also have the honor of representing Pakistan, um, you know, at the UNESCO headquarters Paris. Uh, and you were the only Pakistani social scientist on the panel uh, from an audience hailing from 69 countries. What an honor. How did that, that come about? So, um, it's based on my MPhil. Uh, for my MPhil's dissertation, I created a teacher development toolkit yeah. uh, based on whole school approaches to sustainability and I carried out workshops in different uh, cities of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a standard procedure that once you graduate, you extend your research and you make it uh, more publicly available. Um, so I started applying to different conferences to present my work and when I sent this uh, submission to University College London in UK, the director uh, of that college, he wrote back to me that if you're interested, um, there's a conference coming at UNESCO, which is bringing forth experts of the field, especially working towards um, education for sustainable development. So he asked me that if we can share your work with them because he, he was of the view that this is, uh, this is massive, massive yeah. work and it's a groundbreaking research and it should transcend beyond a certain com country and a community. So I just said, fine, you may share it. And a couple of days after that, like after a fortnight or so, I got a letter. Um, and I got a VIP invitation from UNESCO headquarters wow. Paris for this conference, angel conference, which was happening there. And um, This is which year? This is this just this year. 23? Yes, wow. in March 2023, yeah. I got a letter from them. And um, initially, I thought that maybe it's a scam because mm. that's what mostly happens with these mm. governing bodies. So I wrote back to UCL asking for uh, validation on the same. And mm -hmm. they told me that it's real. Mm. Um, and then I applied for visa. And uh, fast forward on 19th June 2023, I was Paris. at UNESCO, yes, I was at UNESCO. How was that experience? How was the whole experience of I being there? I would say it was overwhelming yeah. um, because, um, you know, everybody else who was invited, everyone else has a, had a doctorate. I was the only one who did not have a doctorate and who, despite not having a doctorate, my, my work, the quality of the, my work what was at par with yeah. uh, what was being uh, disseminated there. Uh, in all honesty, I, it was an overwhelmingly you know, exciting experience, but at the same time, um, I kept thinking that how important it is to go back home and share this with the people around. Mm -hmm. But if I can do it, um, a small town girl can do it, anybody else can do it. It's only a matter of when. Uh, it's only a matter of how much effort, energy, and hard work you're willing to commit to, mm -hmm. um, and what kind of challenges you are, you're willing to endure. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that 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 determines it all. And then yes, obviously there, there are systems of support as well, which also factor in. 
-hmm. which mm -hmm. are less for girls in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say that whatever is available there, we should try to exhaust that and we should try to uh, at least try to max use our own potential to the, to the, to best. the best of it. Right. Yes. And how was your experience of interacting with dignitaries from around the world? All cultures, um, different studies. How was that experience? It was quite multicultural to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, I got to, you know, when you get out of your own uh, comfort zone and mm -hmm. you go out from your own sphere of of influence, you uh, you come across ideas which are very similar to yours, but they are very unique in their approach too. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it was an eye opener because um, I got to understand that. We're all very same in our existence, mm -hmm. the way we govern. It's just that the global south where we exist, our challenges are a bit unique. Um, so the things which were being talked about there, although there was a lot of knowledge sharing which was happening and a lot of uh, policy makers were there, uh, govern individuals from gl global entities were there, but it's just that it is important to have voices from global south on such forums, which is a scanty trait at this point in time. Uh, there wasn't anybody else from Pakistan. There was only one individual from India. Um, there wasn't any representation from any other South Asian country minus, mm. I think, Bangladesh. There was one person from there. So I do think that it is important for the um, world to move towards sustainability as a whole. It is vital that such voices are present on different forums mm -hmm. and these stories could be told. Um, these issues could be brought to light because what happens is that the the, the, the decision-making process is highly westernized. It has uh, to be inclusive. Yes, so it has to be inclusive. We are getting there, but there's a, that there's I a feel there's a gap. huge gap. There's, there's, we still have a long mile to go. Yeah. And especially from Pakistan, I would say, well, I'm not anti-men, please don't uh, consider me that. Not at all. But I do believe that female voices they they need to be in such forums then like the room of opportunities for females are f less but now uh, Adush, have don't don't you think that over the last decade or so or probably 15 years things have really changed uh, like i said we are getting there we're but getting we're there. not there i i the personally the pace is slow perhaps it is painfully slow okay. um, i've personally <laughs> experienced that we fantasize the idea of strong women. Mm. We are infatuated by the idea of the philosophy of alpha females. But I don't think so we consider as a nation, and I think it's more of a global issue, that we don't factor in that what happens once there is a strong woman. Mm. Is there any system of support? It's like, uh, at, at least for me, at a personal level, I've felt at many, many occasions, despite the privilege of having a family which stands by mm -hmm. me, it's like walking on a sticky floor consistently. Yeah. Um, it's like you have gone beyond the glass ceiling, but uh, you're on a cliffhanger. Those are the challenges and difficulties that you yeah. need to face to get to where you are. And you have to be um, at a personal level. I mean, like I wouldn't go into whining about it. I've come to terms with it. But at the same time, I do not believe in shying away from what reality is. Um, like you said, that you have to come to terms with the fact that there are going to be challenges. You have to come, you have to become comfortable with the fact that people are going to dislike you for being assertive, for being ambitious, um, especially young girls, um, especially girls who have ambition in their eyes and who want to do something big and magnificent for masses at large. But you gave um, a very important message also that you know sometimes this kind of demotivation or discouragement actually encourages you. It to does. achieve more. It does. There's this uh, poem by uh, Charles McCarthy, which I really like. That uh, He says, um, you have no enemy, you say. Alas, my friend, the boast is poor. For he who has mingled in the fray of duty that the brave endure, he or she is bound to make foes. If you have never dashed a cup from perjured lip, if you have never uh, hit a uh, predator on the hip. You have been a coward in the fight. You've never turned wrong to right. Mm. Uh, so it's it's not you exactly stand, as it yeah. as it is. I can't really I don't remember the exact verses, yeah. but this is but what this it is implies. It. Yeah. I think I live by that. that Great, question. awesome, awesome. And then we come to your nomination for the prestigious 30 under 30 uh, Global Award by North American Association for Environmental Education for your services in environmental and sustainability education. Yes. Again, 30 under 30, that's, that's a big forum, that's a big achievement. How did that come about? 
So I was working with this professor um, from Australia. Um, we were discussing the possibility of uh, conducting this research with uh, three different countries, with Pakistan being its locus. Um, and I shared some of my achievements with him and shared some of the projects I was passionate about. Um, he uh, was on the board of uh, this North American Association for Environmental Education. He said to me, this was in the year 2018, he said that, Ruj, if you continue with this same streak, um, no wonder by the time you'll, you'll reach your 30 or you'll be nearing 30, you would be nominated for something of that sort. Well, I, I, I just took it as a joke that, you know, he's yeah, saying it just, just to build motivation. You, uh, yeah. um, fast forward to 2022, when I graduated, I sent him an email with my uh, work and I shared it with him because he's more of a mentor to me. Um, and a couple of months after that, I received an email from North American Association of Environmental Education that I've been nominated from Pakistan, and he nominated me for it. No. Uh, because you have to have a streak of about uh, five to ten years of work, tangible work, um, where in order and to qualify. yes, where you where you can where they can see that mm. there is an impact that you have created. So uh, during COVID, especially, I worked with a lot of schools online yeah. mm -hmm. for uh, running their competency models and build, helping them build capacity for, for free of cost, like it was it was pro bono, um, and it used to be very exciting. So probably that's one of the things that was cited. And then um, I am a huge proponent of sustainability education in general, uh, not just environmental sustainability, but sustainability in as a whole like through economy through morality through society so that's also one thing that they uh, saw as an impact which I had created over the last uh, wow. 10 years and that's what you got you where you yes went. all right yes. awesome great um, and I'm sure you shared the stage with a lot of other talented individuals like there were 30, 30 individuals 30 from, from different fields yes uh, I have like they are, they have been nominated for they it. have been nominated yeah. for it. great uh, you mentioned COVID and I think uh, the future uh, dynamics of uh, the field of education were greatly altered or changed during the course of COVID, right? Online education, which seemed to be a luxury, became a necessity. Absolutely. And then once COVID was tamed, even then it continued because of its benefits, you know. What do you see is the future of education? Like, do you see the physical form will s slowly and gradually erode and online education will take over? Or how do you see it? I don't think so. Face-to-face uh, -face education is going to be a case of history. But I do see a massive growth in terms of the skill set which is to be uh, provided to the students of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in the fact that, because you've asked for my take on it, I yeah. believe in the fact that the schools need to be repositories uh, of education which equips learners. Mm -hmm. um, and not just schools, it has to be equally translated into higher education as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I see a future where individuals should be capable of learning on their own mm -hmm. rather than being dependent on a commodity or a school. The system of school, the setup of school shall always be there because school is more of a communal space. Mm -hmm. Schools, in my opinion, in my vision, schools maybe 20 years down the lane would become communities, right? Mm -hmm. Where skills are being taught. Contents uh, are going to become irrelevant with each passing day because content-based knowledge is something that you can acquire. There are multiple uh, avenues that you can you know uh, you, you can refer to like mm -hmm. Google is there like mm -hmm. with the incorporation of artificial intelligence in place there's so much that can be learned we just have to teach learners the skill of being independent and being lifelong learners yeah. and that's where I think education is headed because the challenges of tomorrow would not be dealing with problems of today it mm -hmm. would be dealing with uh, issues which are yet which are yet, yet to, to be, be discovered. there <laughs> so for that to happen the workforce has to be trained in a way that it can build and you know del delve into those competencies rather than getting hung on the idea of what an ideal system looks like Great. because there's no ideal at the moment to be very honest there um, is never an ideal there's never going to be and i i fear that in this day and age we also have to steer clear from the instagrammable nature of education mm. uh, education for the sake of it or education that looks flowery and flashy that's that's a dilemma 
am I see in academia at the moment? Uh, so if we avoid that pitfall and we help students build competencies for t in a true manner, mm. that's what we need. Uh, and beyond that, in addition to competencies, there's also a dire need of working on um, behavioral management because uh, moving on, issues of the world are going to be mental health oriented yeah. or they're going to be related to your personal management, your emotions, how how you deal with your intellectual side, how you interact with people, right? Yeah. That's something that needs to be softer safe. skills. Yeah. Uh, you you are a, an award winning educationist. What how do you rate the vocational training aspect? Because we've got a youth bulge, right, in Pakistan we have more than about sixty five percent of the population which is termed in, in under youth. Do you think that uh, strong focus on vocational training, its spread in Pakistan, can actually help bolster the youth and prepare them for jobs across Pakistan and abroad? I believe that there is a dire need of um, steps being taken in that direction because Pakistan is, the, is, is, is second on the spectrum of out of school children. Right, we have the second largest population yeah. which has out of school children in the it's world. So pretty, yeah. um, and we also have to be mindful of the fact that education has to be contextually relevant. So, if you put a child who doesn't have that kind of socio-economic background and who doesn't have that kind of orientation towards skills which are being taught or or the competencies or the degrees which are being offered in mainstream education, uh, you're not preparing them. You're not doing them any service because eventually they might not be able to be a good fit in that ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. So what might be more fruitful, and because it's not just the socioeconomic conditions, it's their familial background, it's where they hail from, it's their personal orientation, yes. it's their ability to see value in what they're doing. So having a, a, a strong system of training the young learners or uh, young adults for vocational uh, skills is going to not only help this population which is suffering at the moment or which is out of school uh, but is also going to help the economy in general. Um, it's going to build an inertia which is going to have more competent workers or may, might as well be more innovators. Uh, so we also have to, uh, I also believe that we need to destigmatize vocational training in general. It is something that is looked down upon which is not the case in West. Mm. If you are an electrician or if you are aspiring to be a tailor uh, and if you take training for that, that's seen as equally viable yeah. of, of a career option. Yeah. So we need to, as a society, we need to reconsider these choices and yes, there is a need of investing time. I need, I, I personally feel, absolutely, okay. well said. Uh, you are writing a book also. Oh yeah. Tell us about that. <laughs> okay. So I'm, um, I'm, there are two streams of books I'm working at. Um, one is going to be published, hopefully, Touchwood, from Bloomsbury, UK. That's mm -hmm. an academic uh, book. There are 11 people from around the world who are contributing to that. Okay. And I'm from Pakistan on, okay. on that panel. That's on environmental education and how it can move forward in 21st century. The second one is more of a personal, that's a personal person. Personal person. Yeah, and that's uh, bits and snippets that I enjoy and cherish in life and things which uh, drive hope in me. So that's based on that. That's a personal pedagogy. And when is of that life. coming out? Not anytime soon. The okay. You're first, take your time. first one is going to be hopefully published by early 2025. Okay. Um, whereas the other one, which is a personal narrative, that's a personal account, that's going to be published. Okay. In another decade or so, probably. All right. Okay. I'm still working on no, it. No, that's great. Yeah, yeah, you should pen down your thoughts, compile yeah. them, and come up yeah. with a good product. Absolutely. Yeah. I would be engaged with other uh, writing endeavors on the way, uh, which are going to be more academic in nature. Okay. I'm, I'm, I've started writing a draft about this pedagogy that I believe in. That's called pedagogy of passion. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that we can do within education to get kids excited? Uh, so it's basically small snippets about oh. that. So that's something that's going to be out in another six, seven years time because okay. I'm still building on it. Uh, in addition to the Bloomsbury publication, which is in in pipeline at the yeah. moment, yeah. but the personal narrative is going to take its time. It's gonna, yeah. I don't think so. I'm quite there as of yet. Okay. Cool. So cool. it's going to go on. Awesome, uh, Aruj. Any uh, regrets in life? Anything that you sometimes think that okay. Maybe at that time, if I didn't take this decision, I should have taken this decision, and maybe I would have been better off. Anything that you think I really is would unachieved? 
or something you wanted to I achieve? I wouldn't say unachieve. Achievement is a huge claim. Um, there's so much which I can achieve, but still, I mean, like, and you've got I, a I just lot started. Of years. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. 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 So, uh, achievement is not a benchmark, but uh, regrets? No, not really. Not really. Um, yeah, Alhamdulillah, I have been. I, I believe in. You're blessed. That I'm blessed, and I also believe that uh, once you have put in your best, uh, then you should let the sovereign authority decide how it uh, uh, unfolds Absolutely. from there. I don't, I don't believe in holding on to regrets. Yes, I could have this regret that I thought too much about people who did not like me, but that's not a regret, really. That's, a, yeah. that's an inner feeling. That's um, an inner feeling. And you can control it, of course. You can tame it. Yeah, of course. Um, what are your future plans, immediate future plans and long-term future? What do you want to do? I'm, I'm working towards a doctorate. Um, mm -hmm. Inshallah, I want to invest time, energy, and thought into um, societal intervention, mm -hmm. global policy, and mm -hmm. its roots with education. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I'm working on. Additionally, I'm currently associated with um, a very reputable IB School Learning Alliance International in Lahore. Yeah. So I do intend to work with them till the time I start my do doctorate. Along with that, in the longer haul um, of life, I would like to work continue working in development education, mm -hmm. uh, especially with marginalized communities. That's mm -hmm. one thing I'm really passionate about. So I do see a, myself going towards a career where I'm maybe teaching a module or two at a university and then I'm working full time uh, as a development consultant and I'm helping countries build policies which are uh, yeah. contextually relevant and I'm helping schools build competencies. Teacher education is really close to my heart. So that's something that I think I'll always do. Uh, so that's my long-term so plan. Nice. And then yes, once I retire, by retire I mean like when, once I stop working full-time, like not 18 hours a day, uh, then I would like to engage with pursuits which are around writing and meeting, exploring the world and the fascination it you want offers. You travel also. Absolutely. Yes. I think I want to travel. Traveling teaches yeah. you a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. It helps you let go of your biases. Yes. Absolutely. Well said. Mm. Um, there are a lot of uh, young girls watching you right now, a lot of our audience locally, internationally. Any specific message, anything you'd like to say to the viewers, to the um, audience? I would just like to conclude by saying that um, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. Um, it really doesn't matter what challenges you're facing. What matters is your will. Uh, how determined are you to go ahead in life and also once you achieve something then it is your moral responsibility to make sure that the privilege that you have acquired that goes beyond your personal sphere that goes beyond the individual that you are and you're able to truly reflect it with any community that you can influence so uh, think beyond your personal being and then I think that's all we need in this day and age uh, there's one more thing I would like to quote is yes, people's yes. obsession with power. I do believe that uh, whatever you're trying to achieve in life, yes, it is acquainted with some form of power that you want to acquire. But what's more important is that what you choose to do with that power. Mm. So may be mindful of that. Application of power. Yes. That is more important. Yeah. Arush, what a pleasure having you. Likewise. Thank you so very much. I wish you all the best with your you. PhD and your career. Bring more laurels for Pakistan. Thank you're you. doing a great job. Keep it up. You're representing the bright, energetic, dynamic, and uh, enthusiastic women of Pakistan. And I want you to carry on with it and be the torch bearer. Uh, viewers, with this, we come to the end of this episode of Sky is the Limit. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with uh, Aruj Khalik. I'll inshallah see you in another episode of Sky is the Limit. Till then, Allah.